Hello everyone, this is Ted Bauman here, editor of The Bauman Letter, uh, with your weekly Friday Bauman Daily video. Uh, a few moments just before I started recording this video on Wednesday, uh, a note came through saying that the uh, World Health Organization had declared the virus, the COVID-19 virus outbreak, a pandemic as opposed to an epidemic uh, in individual countries. Um, I think everybody knew that, but uh, by now I think it, that's going to have an effect on the uh, the stock market, we've already seen a lot of declines, um, big declines because of this. I can expect that this pronouncement will probably lead to more today, possibly by the time you see this. Now, I want to talk about today something that's a little different, and that is the government's likely response to this. Uh, we know that up till now, the government has focused on trying to contain the virus. Uh, it started out by trying to prevent people from affected companies, or sorry, countries from getting into the United States. Uh, for example, uh, restricting flights to China, preventing people from the cruise ships that were affected from coming ashore, and so on. Well, it's clear by now that that uh, has been a complete failure. Uh, that has not stopped the spread of the virus. At last count, it was in over 30 uh, U.S. states, and there are significant clusters of infection uh, on both coasts, and, and even one growing here in Atlanta, uh, where I live. Now, a while back, I predicted that the government would probably stop trying to contain the virus and focus on just letting the economy flow, uh, let people get sick, um, let it take its course, and let them get better. But I think I was wrong about that, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, I think what, I, what I've learned uh, by looking at the information that has been, and the analysis that has been put out by people a lot smarter than me about these things, is that the big problem with the coronavirus uh, is not that it is particularly deadly. It's rather that it's deadly to a, a certain type of person, older people, and that therefore those people uh, need acute care if they catch the virus. Most people don't, but enough people will need acute care uh, that if all of them get sick at once, it's going to overwhelm the hospitals. So I want to show you a graph which explains the logic behind this, because it's going to explain why I think the government is going to do what it do will do. Now, this graph shows you the number of cases on the left-hand side, and on the bottom, it shows you the time since the first case. Now, the line, uh, the dotted line shows you the capacity of the healthcare system to handle acute care cases. If you don't try to slow down the spread of the virus, you get a lot of cases very quickly, and a lot of people come into the hospitals looking for acute care. That overwhelms the capacity of the hospitals, and it causes chaos. If you try to slow down the spread of the virus, you spread it out over time. So although people will get sick, the number of people who need acute care will not be too high at any given moment uh, to exceed the capacity of the healthcare system to address their problems. So the question is, how does that affect what the government's likely to do in response? And how does that affect you as an investor? Well, first of all, um, it means that my previous prediction that the government would not try to slow the spread of the virus, just let it take its course, is wrong. And that's because I don't know enough about uh, epidemics to, to know that this logic uh, is the one that shapes the response. Instead, even if the virus is not particularly deadly, they're still going to try to shut down uh, communication. They're still going to try to uh, limit people's social interactions. They're going to limit travel. And that means that people are going to be staying home. They're not going to be spending money. Businesses are going to close. Uh, and that's going to reduce economic activity. So the important thing to understand is that it's a logical outcome of the, the, the right strategy of dealing with the uh, pandemic to try to slow down the spread of the virus, even if you know that there's no way you can stop it from spreading. Now, if that's the case, we can certainly expect recessionary conditions uh, throughout the rest of this year, almost certainly. I think at this point, the likelihood of a recession, which is defined by two consecutive quarters of uh, decline in economic output, is well high, well above 50%. Now, that's not a prediction uh, that's based on anything that's uh, wrong with the economy. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, anything other than the fact that we are going to see reduced economic activity. And that means that the economy is going to slow down. Uh, and technically, if it does that for six months in a row, we're in a recession. So if we're in a recession, um, what is the, the likely response? Well, it's important to understand that no amount of tax cutting, no amount of fiscal uh, expenditure, sending out checks the way the government did in 2008 after the financial crisis then, none of that's going to make any difference. 
Because the problem isn't that people don't have money, it's that they can't go out and interact with each other in the economy to spend that money. And if they can't do that, no amount of money is actually going to change the problem. People are not going to take airplanes, they're not going to go to stores, they're not going to go to concerts, they're not going to go uh, to shopping malls, they're going to try to stay home, they're going to try to shop online. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, you will see uh, a, a big contraction of the major forms of economic activity that take place day to day. Now, if that's the case, um, what are we going to do? I mean, what's, uh, what's the response likely to be? Well, one thing that we do know is that the government is going to be under intense pressure to try to uh, bail out industries that are facing unusual hardships as a result of this, like the airlines, but also like the energy sector. Um, the biggest problem in the energy sector right now is that a lot of oil shale fracking companies are highly leveraged. They owe a lot of money in debt. Uh, and with energy prices falling, not just because of the coronavirus or, or sorry, the COVID-19 virus, but because of the uh, current battle between Saudi Arabia and Russia over oil prices, these companies run the risk of going bankrupt and not being able to pay their loans. Now, if they can't pay their loans, that puts pressure on the financial system as well. Hedge funds that have lent them money, uh, everybody who has bought into secondary derivatives that are involved with corporate loans in the energy sector. All of those people are going to be crying to Congress and the Trump administration for bailouts. So I predict that although we probably won't see significant uh, bailouts directed toward ordinary uh, consumers like ourselves, we probably will see some bailouts that are directed to these big institutions like, uh, or rather the big industries like the airlines, energy, uh, and the financial sector. Now that will probably make a lot of people unhappy and as well it should, uh, but it's what's probably going to happen. Now I could be wrong about fiscal stimulus coming to individual Americans. Uh, obviously with an election coming, it's likely that the politicians will want to be seen to be doing something even if it's not all that effective. So the bottom line is that I don't think that the government is in a position to do anything to protect the economy from a recession uh, during the summer and possibly into fall and winter. <clears throat> so if that's the case, what should you be doing? Well, here are my three suggestions. First of all, if the government does end up sending out any uh, stimulus checks or cuts taxes as it did in 2008, uh, I'd use that money first to pay down debt. I think in the short term, uh, it's unlikely that uh, you're going to find uh, that spending that money to try to stimulate the economy would make any difference. Um, but what it can help you do uh, is to improve your own financial situation. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So if you do get a, a stimulus check out of nowhere, then I think it's a good idea. Uh, pay down credit card debt. Uh, always pay down credit card debt if you, if you, if you, if you can. I'm a big uh, opponent of, of running up credit card debts. The second thing is, is if debt is not an issue for you, then I would use some of that money to invest in non-correlated assets. In other words, assets that move the opposite direction of the stock market. That includes things like ETFs, exchange traded funds, that uh, uh, specialize in, in the US bond market. We've seen the value or the price of one TLT, the uh, uh, US Treasury ETF that tracks treasuries, rise by over 12% uh, over the last four weeks. So there's one. There's also gold and, of course, safe haven currencies like the uh, Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. Those are also up, albeit uh, fairly uh, small amounts. Now, I've talked about that before. Um, so that uh, is something that I would reiterate. Uh, invest in non-correlated assets, assets that move the opposite direction of the market. The third thing to do is to take any of that money that comes to you uh, and put it aside and wait for the stock market to turn back up again. Uh, when it does, uh, and uh, when people like me start sending out the signal to buy stocks again, having that stimulus money in the bank ready to buy uh, uh, stocks or other assets in your brokerage account or your retirement account would be a great thing. The third thing is I would not sell my uh, existing stock holdings, or rather my fourth thing, I wouldn't sell stock holdings with some exceptions. Uh, I've mentioned already that airlines, the en energy industry, and possibly uh, the financial sector could be at serious risk. Uh, if the government doesn't bail them out, in particular, um, that could cause some bankruptcies, which in turn could be catastrophic uh, if you hold shares, for example, in airlines, or if you hold shares uh, in companies that are involved in fracking 
or uh, the companies that own the pipelines, the uh, so-called midstream companies that transfer uh, oil and natural gas from the fracking fields to the refinery. So those companies, you've got to keep a close eye on and keep a close eye on the news to see what the government's response is. Because although the government may not want to be seen to be bailing out industry in a crisis, the pressure to do so will be very high. Uh, there will also be pressure not to do it, particularly since the Trump administration uh, came in, in, in a sense, as a reaction to the bailouts from 2008 of the financial sector. So that might not happen. They might let them go bankrupt. Uh, and if that does, you don't want to be invested in them. So be sure you keep an eye and be careful of your investments in those at-risk sectors. So there's my advice. What you can do just to, to, to sum up, the government is unlikely to be able to do anything to prop up the economy because of the nature of the problem. Uh, as a result, if it does try to send out any stimulus money to you, um, the best thing to do is to use it to protect yourself. Uh, by in either investing in non correlated assets, paying down debt, or uh, having money ready for when the stock market does turn back up again, which it most assuredly will. This is Ted Bauman speaking. Have a great weekend. And uh, remember, uh, one of the most important things to do in a situation like this is to carry on with your life, not worry too much, and don't overfocus on your stock portfolio. Give it a rest over the weekend. I'll see you all next week.